Welcome to the Perfectly Integrated Podcast, hosted by Matt Ackerman, where we show the power of teamwork in wealth management. Now, on to the show. Building a brand is like building a great house. You need to start with a strong foundation. You need structure. You need rooms to grow into. But you also need a little polish, a splash of color. And for your next guest, it doesn't hurt if that color is purple. I'm excited today to be talking brand building with the one and only Tony Steak, an executive at InvestCloud. Tony has not only built a brand for himself in this industry, but a brand for InvestCloud that has left a real indelible impression on both the industry and all of us. Tony also has his eye on other growing brands like OnRamp, where he was an early investor. So there is no one better to talk brands with than my main man from Milwaukee, Tony Steak. Tony, welcome. Wow, Matt, quite the introduction. So kind of you. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be here. So, Tony, I'd like to start big. What is the biggest mistake that advisors make when it comes to creating a brand? Oh, man, this is a tough question. We actually talked about this today at, at the event we're at, Market Council Summit. The short story is this. Everyone uses the same words, Right. We're all providing a, a form of advice. And so how do you break through? And the brand is the way to do that. We talked a bit about today on the panel about tribalism, the idea of creating a tribe, a community of not customers, but people that you want to work with. And that's the establishment. So you do that. So it's complicated, though, to, to build a brand. In fact, I want to tell you a story. Marketing 101. Okay. You're taught very early on in marketing that a brand is not created by you. A brand is created by the community and how they perceive you or the product or the service. So the concept here is how do you position yourself so the brand kind of emanates itself from you and it's designed or kind of dictated by the consumer. That's the first and foremost start. But I think you have a ton of questions. We'll probably get into this further. But the short story is understanding you and how the market will perceive you. That's how you create a brand. So talk to me about your brand then. How was the, you have a great personal brand. It is Thank you. something that is magnetic. It, it is something that draws attention. It is something that's very, very memorable. How did the community create the brand that is Mr. Purple, that is Tony Steak? <laughs> that's a good question. And it, there's a great story behind it. I told this story a few times, but when I first started going to conferences, I always wore a purple tie. And when I ran, the event, the event space for Navaplan, now part of InvestCloud, the goal was always to make sure people were presentable in a certain way. And so I required suits and ties, and my ties were always purple. And then slowly, some more accoutrement, right? There's the purple handkerchief and the purple flower. And then the brand started getting legs on its own, right? People were actually anticipating that I was wearing purple to the point where I started investing in purple tennis shoes. I have almost a dozen purple tennis shoes now, uh, some of which I'm wearing today, actually. And I embraced that because the community dictated that to me. And it actually, it, it unfolded in 2018 at Schwab Impact. I was actually with you there, in yeah. fact. And I was with Michael Kitsis and Steve Zushin. Raj Udeshi walked up to us as we were talking. And he says, hi to Michael. He says, hi to Steve. And he says, hey, Mr. Purple. And at that point, Michael Kitsy says, that's it. That's going to stick. And now you could talk about my the purple being a little kitschy or a little silly or what have you. But I think you made an important point within your question. It's the memorable nature of that and how I can take advantage of that. Right. So now when I walk through a conference or what have you, people know who I am. They all know who I am rightly or wrongly, <laughs> um, and that's part of it. Embracing the brand defined by the community around you and then leveraging that to your advantage. But it's about leaving that indelible impression. You mentioned Michael Kitsis. He has his blue shirt. The blue shirts. Right. So when you have that kind of hook, it makes you stand out in a sea of sameness. You must stand amongst a lot of different providers, and it's about standing out. And it starts with you as an individual, but it then it envelops the brand that you represent too. And I, I think you leave a great impression in that way. Well, thank you for that. And it, it's true though, right? Everyone wears suits, men wear suits, women wear dresses. There's a certain point where you're all kind of homogenous, you look the same. And so there's gotta be ways to differentiate yourself, to stand out from the sea of other people around you. And this is the way I did it. I've embraced it now. Uh, it, it's actually kind of funny because at, at home, I keep work and home separate. 
just because, you know, I go home, I want to be a family man, I want to be a father, I want to be involved in church or other activities. And somehow, some way, someone found out about the purple brand within my local community. And now it's <laughs> it's kind of uh, funny because some of the guys now give me a hard time about it, but it's who I am and people look forward to it. And I enjoy, I mean, quite frankly, it's a great color. It's the color of royalty. Oh, yeah. What a lot of people don't know that I feel like I've gotten to know from knowing you for several years is the brand is very genuine. You are a very genuine person. I don't know if you want a lot of people to know this, but it's you have a way of, as a person, of making people feel very welcome and making people feel they're the most important conversation in the room. When sometimes there's a lot of other conversations happening. Was that a choice in the brand or is that just, this is who I am? This genuine piece is, is, is not something, not a put on, it's not a play. It's really what I'm, what I'm about. Well, it's two things. One, I mean, it is who I am. But two, I'm just going to say this out loud, Matt. We work in an industry with some really special people. Yeah. We really do. Uh, I think for a variety of reasons, one of which is the nobility of financial advice and the importance that, that plays in the roles of helping people make their ways through their lives financially. It's just we're full of good people. I come from a place where it's important that you treat people the way you'd want to be treated. And I know that sounds kind of cliche or whatever, but it's, yeah, it's who I am. It's how I've been raised. And quite frankly, every one of those conversations is genuine. There's not, there's no, it's, it's not fake. I look forward to seeing everyone. I look forward to giving everyone a hug or a fist bump or whatever they want. I look forward to sitting down and catching up people's lives because we have to remember, and COVID helped us re remember this, that there's other stuff going on and the job is very important, but I want to ask about your boys. I want to ask about your boys' podcast and, and the uh -huh. YouTube channel. Like, th those things are important to me. I want to know. While it is personal and it is authentic, that certainly doesn't hurt the brand either. It's so interesting because it's we're using a lot of words like being genuine, being real, being who you are, but it's also about standing out, which can be a little hard for advisors in this, like we said, this sea of sameness. What are, if you could give some advice to advisors listening, what would you say is some good things they should think about as they look to develop and build their brands? Sure. Uh, that's a great question. And I'll try and unpack it crystal clear. First and foremost, on the panel today, what we try to do is not just give you activity-based nuggets, like post a blog, tweet, <laughs> like, come on. Like that's, everyone does that. That's just fictitious. It's fake. It's So there's three steps I would encourage any advisor to take. Okay. It's defining their ideal customer profile first. Who do they want to work with? The advice relationship should be collaborative. And so you want clients that think the same as you, have the same goals and dreams and aspirations, right? So once you define that ideal customer profile, and please don't include AUM, that does not matter. What matters is the person and the type of advice they want. Once you define that out, then you define yourself. Who are you? What do you want to serve? Why did you join this profession? Okay, if it's because you want to make, if you want to help people with ESG investing, or if you want to service special needs families, or if you want to service divorcees, whatever that is, really define that and create that. That's how you're gonna stand out and then build the catalog of words you want to use or markets you want to target, which is again, that ideal customer profile. Once you put those two, two things together, all of a sudden you create a community prospects in a community of customers. And the power of brand and marketing isn't about what website you use or what blogs you use or where you get placed in the media. It's creating a community that's been defined by your prospects and clients, and they'll come to you. Quite frankly, the best marketing is creating that image of who you want to be in the market based on your ideal customer profile, and the leads will come. We talked about it today, in fact, marketing automation, right? Everyone talks about marketing automation and sending out emails and social, and that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. That helps you grow your business. But if you want to really create a client base of people that you want to work with, that you don't want to fire, I mean, you people fire clients, right? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> if you want to create that, then you're set for life and you're gonna be happy. Yeah. And you're gonna be happy and your brand is gonna to continue to develop just like mine, right? Just right. like my happiness in the conversation that I has, because it's, I have the brand I want, Right, and advisors can do that too once they define their ideal customer profile and create a plan based on that. And that, quite frankly, will stand you out from the competition because I don't, I'm not saying niche-based marketing. I'm saying you want to truly define yourself and how you're going to provide advice and the leads will come in without question. 
define thyself is such an interesting turn of phrase because I'm thinking about the folks in this industry, the thought leaders that stand out to me. And I think about somebody like Tyrone Ross at OnRamp because his theme is really around gratitude. It's not a, he doesn't push out crypto. So his brand is about helping people, really. I, I get excited about that, those kind of those kind of brands because it means that no matter what happens in, say, the crypto space, his brand is something that's meaningful beyond something like that. It truly is. Once we get, we, so we're, we're there. We're at yeah. that per, purpose-driven movement. Yes. And that's a very powerful movement because these next generation of investors, like the millennials, we talked about this, they, they're tribalists. They want to be part of their tribes. If that's making the earth a better place, if that's political, if that's religious, whatever it is, they want to be a part of a tribe. And so by creating Tyrone, who's, by the way, a great friend of mine, I invested, of course, in OnRam very early on because I believe so much in what he's going to do uh, and disrupt the space. But I also, I mean, to your point about personal brand, I invested in him. You know what yeah. I mean? I made a commitment to him. And I said, I want to see you win. I believe you'll win with or without my help. I think you will win. What a great example of a personal, purposeful, driven brand, Tyrone Ross, and what he's done with it. I mean, it's amazing. Remarkable. Yeah, I, the, those are the brands that I know. There's, again, genuine. I'm going to go back to that word genuine because, to me, you also know when a brand is built on, on, on a rocky foundation, too, at times, when it's a brand that's maybe not built on something that genuine. So I think if I'm giving advice to advisors and hearing what you're saying, it's, it's all about finding that genuine scope, starting with your community first rather than putting yourself first too no and that's and that i'm telling you the fruits of the labor will be amazing and it'll be easy work right it'll be easy work to create that because your brand will then kind of develop on its own mm -hmm. dictated by the community but also dictated by yourself it's a really remarkable concept and uh i think if i was an advisor that's certainly what i would do first i would say who, what makes me tick yeah what makes my what are my ideal customers what makes them tick and then put those things together and boom, you have a client base for life, sticky clients that love working with you, that are gonna invite you to their kids' marriages, that are gonna invite you to the socials. Like that's what you want, that's the point you wanna get in life where you become more than just an advisor, transactional. It becomes this relationship and that's all part of the brand. I mean, that, quite frankly, marketing and brand emanates throughout the entire customer journey yeah. um, from prospecting all the way through the referrals and everything else in between. So be mindful of that at any given moment. That's your brand. Yeah. And it's a brand that you need to be proud of. It's a brand you have to cultivate. It's a brand you have to put Like you said, you want to get away from the tactical. People wanting to say to you, okay, how many blog posts a week do I have to put out? How many tweets a week do I need to do to get from here to there? If, when it just becomes part of your DNA, that's when real change is Yeah, happen. I mean, like, that's the whole concept behind, like, viral marketing. But think about viral in a community-based approach where, like, you do good things for people, right? If you provide... I have some friends that do special needs advice. And so they only focus on families with special needs. And once they do them right, once they help them make their ways through their lives, guess what happens? The leads just flow in. There's no marketing there. It's because you've created an ambassador for you into that community. And that is so powerful. And it's not, you don't have to beg for these referrals. You don't have to beg for them. You don't have to ask someone to share your content. No, no, no. It They'll do it for you. So it just... And, and that's the thing is, I mean, here's the thing. I've talked to so many advisors, and I know you have, and they get overwhelmed, right? They get so overwhelmed, like, oh, man, I got to send out how many emails this week or blog posts or I have to go to this conference and learn about this software and da-da-da-da. They need to take, take a step back and just get down to the basics because everything else will be so much easier once you do that. Again, in understanding the persona you want to target, understanding who you are, and then everything else will just come naturally after that. It's creating that community of raving fans because then it doesn't matter. All these other things become background noise. If, if your community is raving fans, your business is going to take off. And that's really the goal, right? The end play for marketing is a business of growth. Well, we, yeah, we want to we make money, right? Yeah, like that's, at the end of the day, we all want to make money. But like, what a great, well, I mean, honestly, what a great space. We're in yes. an industry where we get to make money doing a very noble thing. Yes. providing financial advice. But not only that, think about that, like you said, the community brand, that 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 virality. Those are all clients that you're attracting that you want. Yeah. That you want, that it'd be purposeful to work with. Like there won't be a time where you're like, oh, I have to meet with this client or oh, like this, like this. It'll all be people that you want to serve and that'll just magnify and that'll grow and that'll just, it, it, it's, it's tremendous what'll happen.
Absolutely. Well, I like to end all of my podcasts the same way with a question from my 10 year old son, CJ. CJ, I'm, I got, by the way, I'm CJ's number one fan on YouTube. Right. I just, <laughs> he is so adorable. Thank goodness your mother has, his mother oh, is so God. beautiful because. Yes. Man, she. I, luckily, he looks more like his mother than he looks like his father. Yes. He unfortunately thinks like his father. That's the problem we have to worry about <laughs> with this child. Are you? Am I, is everything okay? Did I upset you? Yes. <laughs> he definitely has a lot of his father in him there. But I was telling him all about some of the viral marketing that you've done in the past. I, I told him about you uh, having Vanilla Ice at a conference. I told him about uh, helicopter rides with you at a conference once. So he asked me to ask you. He really, it's two answers. Alive and dead, who would you like to have at a conference that would draw a crowd? Someone who's dead and someone who's alive oh, that would definitely draw a crowd. <laughs> alive and dead that would draw I can, a crowd. I can give you his answers to help you. Why don't you? Yes. yes. So he said to me, dead, he wants Walt Disney. He would love to have Walt Disney come to speak at a conference. He thinks that would draw a crowd. And Paul McCartney, he thinks if it was alive, no one would be able to turn away from a Paul McCartney show in terms of- you know, Your magnet. son is just brilliant. I mean, <laughs> Disney, what a what a great pick with Disney, right? Like <laughs> the man who built this massive world that still exists today on that brand. Jeez, this question is too unfair. I mean, I, <laughs> I wish you gave me this in advance. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I Alive? I think there's some very powerful people out there that are doing some amazing things, okay? okay. Jeez. I don't even know. I'm stumped. You I'm stumped. stumped. So CJ has finally stumped somebody. Yes. That, that is great. He has never stumped anyone before, so you are the first. If I were to be honest with you, the dead person, I was going to pick. But I don't know if this would do a good job. Um, so I, I think... If I could introduce like a philo philosopher or someone sure. like G.K. Chesterton or someone like nice. a brilliant mind who has done so many great things, I think he would be really interesting to listen to. Yeah. But I think that's being very selfish. I, I like, <laughs> yeah, like, I, I want to hear him talk, not maybe the maybe the crowd. I mean, Walt Disney's a great answer, quite frankly. And as it relates to someone alive, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of special people out there that have created some really amazing brands and. Yeah, I don't know. CJ stumped me. I'm gonna have to get back to him. I'm gonna comment on his YouTube nice. every day until I figure out who my picks are. <laughs> That's well, a right good now, one. He's at 95 subscribers. So anybody who's listening to this that would like to subscribe to Summer of Sandwiches, he would be thrilled. We had a KPI to get to 100. So let's see if he can actually. Oh, you're do so it. close. Yes, we are so close. So close. I'll have to share that. I'll share that with some friends. They'll, nice. they'll, 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 he's got more followers than I do on YouTube. Nice. We want your we want your to log in and see if he likes it. That's the demo we would love to see. My to son would love it. I, I, yes. have, I have some kids that love to eat. My son wants to start an origami YouTube channel. So. I'm telling you, we can work with him on that. We'll get it done. Tony, always good to get a chance to talk to you. You are one of my favorite people. You know that. Can't wait to chat again soon. Thank you, sir. I feel the same. Content in this material is for general information only and not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. All performance referenced is historical and is no guarantee of future results. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA SIPC. Investment advice offered through Integrated Partners, a registered investment advisor and separate entity from LPL Financial. Anthony Stitch, InvestCloud, NaviPlan, and Integrated Financial Partners are separate entities and are not affiliated with LPL Financial.